Hey Lou, uh, what's that you got there? Oh, this this is my my uh, money in the bank briefcase. Money. Okay, what do you keep in there? Oh, hold on. Lunch. But I want to cash in my victory speech. Twenty four seven. Lou has decided to cash in his money in the bank briefcase. <laughs> Welcome to TFS Pod, otherwise known as The Few Show Podcast. It is 24-7, Lou, and that's... Ray Card. We're using briefcase now. <laughs> and that's... The one-man band, and I like to cash in my money in the bank to say this is a fallacy. <laughs> oh, yes, folks. OMB was robbed! <laughs> yes, I was robbed. Damn it. Yes, folks, this is uh, Welcome to TFS Pod, of the Future Show Podcast, number one show in your heart, number one show in the world, number one show in your girlfriend's heart, and we are going to do a very, very longer, harder, uncut segment of wrestling talk here. So now, let's first start. I like loose title reign. Whoa, 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 whoa. Anyway, in this segment, we, in this segment, we'll be talking about the money in the bank 2021 pay-per-view we'll be re- reviewing the matches and our predictions and i wonder who won <laughs> uh, the one-man band give everyone i give everyone's new favorite line <clears throat> rick hard boogs get the stuff uh, every time I look at the scoreboard, I feel like Kofi Kingston in a Bobby Lasting match. Oh, <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Uh, with Money in the Bank in the books, we've got 24 7 Lou solidifying his lead at now nine points. Yeah. Bask in the glory. <laughs> yep. Followed <I'm> by. <laughs> Followed by One Man Band, who is runner-up at seven points. Followed by myself in third place, five points. Not too bad. And then you've got J-Few with three points. The Randomizer at two. Yeah. Big Al with his one point for the year. Good and job. everyone else is at zero. Bogey. Bogey. Yep. <laughs> yep. And that's the scoreboard. Yes, Money in the Bank 2021 WB was back with uh, fans again uh, in the stands. They're doing shows already with fans. Ooh, that was a good. That was a good uh, thing to see. Now, now we don't have to hear any more of that piped-in sound, right, Rickard? <sighs> <laughs> Sad man. They still <laughs> piped in sounds. I want to say they, should, they, they, they did. I believe it. But I, I would like to believe that at some point they'll they'll let it go all natural again. Yeah, with just crowd effects. All right, so let's talk about the matches. What did we get first, Ricard? Well, in terms of, uh, didn't they do so? They did a match on the pre-show. I'm drawing a blank on what it is. The uh, the Usos versus the Mysterios. Yeah. Right. They took a page out of Impact's uh, book and had a tag team uh, championship match get defended on the pre-show. Uh, naturally, this was added in last minute, so we didn't have points on the line. But much to our surprise, uh, Vince McMahon is rewarding people who drive under the influence. Yeah. Because new tag champs, the Usos. You yeah. know, I, I don't. I don't think I would have picked it. No, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have picked uh, the Usos winning. Yeah, I wouldn't have either. Yeah, Good. that was very strange. That that's a case of kayfabe beating reality. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, K-Fabe. kids. Remember, kids. Yeah. No consequences. <laughs> Case of uh, Samoan nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so they won. Uh, which new champs in, on on SmackDown? Yeah, new tag champs. New tag champs on SmackDown. That didn't last long for that father son tag team. Oh, uh, but then we had the the show officially start with the women's Money in the Bank match, which was worth uh, two points. That's right, no. everyone. 
It's oh right, 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 right. I'm doing what you did last show. I know. Um, uh, the it was man, worth the, the one man has it. Double points. Oh, I think I say the double, 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 double points. There we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wonderful. And, no, uh, sorry, it was a horrible actually, idea, by the way. Horrible idea. Garbage. Yeah, yeah. No, of course, of course, uh, because nobody got points from that except for someone who had the foresight or just. Uh, I can't use the other word I'm thinking of. Uh, Let's just call it dumb luck. I was going to call it idiocy. The idiocy, but apparently not. Uh, They predicted Nikki, almost a superhero, um, to win the Women's Money in the Bank uh, match. Naturally, this was picked by the person who was almost a winner for Money in the Bank. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, I still can't believe I still can't believe they cheated Nick, Liv Morgan out of that. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, yeah, let, let, let me you talk about that. that. Let me talk about that. I heard that there was uh, the the word around the street. The word around the street was no. The word on the street was that uh, Liv Morgan was they had picked her. They had penned her in to win this, but because WWE knew that people knew that they were going to do that, they wanted to just surprise everyone, and Nikki Ash won it, which was insane. I think would have been exciting to see. Liv Morgan win. Even though I didn't pick her, I picked Alexa Bliss, which got buried. I know there's a bunch of ladders. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think it would have been a, a really really good moment with Liv Morgan winning it, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, the the way that the way that Nikki ASH won the the briefcase was so I had it so weird. Like had everybody they've fighting. never they've never done that spot. They've never done that spot. Mm-hmm. That's true. They have never done that spot. Oh, and and I wish you remember this, I remember, I remember when when it when the spot happened. I remember because you remember I called, I fantasy booked the match basically. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I did the segment, I predicted certain things would happen. Number one, I predicted Nikki Ash would do a soaring through the through the through the air uh, spot onto. Yep. I at the time I said the tag champs, but she ended up doing it on everybody. Uh-huh. Um, so they did that spot. I did predict a spot where all everyone else would go go on the you know three ladders. Six people would go up there, and then oh, yeah. all of them would fall over, and then Alexa Bliss would pop up. And I thought they were going to do that spot because Alexa Bliss was buried on the ladders, and yeah. I thought to myself, okay, she's gonna she's gonna come out of there, you know, because she's crazy and powerful. But no, they just had Nikki Cross just take the belt. I mean the the briefcase. Well, yeah, well, she took the belt the next night. She climbed over everybody, basically. I was like, "What? What the heck? Nobody notices this." Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and then she just took took the briefcase and then left. And uh, they did that thing where they hover over the faces of people who lost. And uh, like, uh, Liv Morgan looked like she was ready to cry. Yeah. <laughs> Real I tears. Will say, I will say, I will say that spot that you called with Nikki Ash um, jumping jumping off the ladder. She was very lucky because if you guys saw that ladder, she it kind of it kind of like moved before she launched, and good thing she had enough momentum to get into the ring because had she not, mm. that 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 Oof. box would have been disgusting. That that would have been bad. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Because think about it. That ring yeah. bounces, and you're putting a ladder on top of it. Oof. Forget it. Oh man, I just thought about that. Oh no no no. All right, so yeah, so JFU got two points. Ugh, stupid two points. Yeah, and, and, and immediately, immediately, Lou was like, so the scoreboard reads JFU one point, everyone else zero. And I had to correct him and say, no. Yeah. In the interest points. of fairness, gave him two points. Yeah. And Lou was the one like, can we take back the rule? And I'm like, no. I was going to rewrite the rule on the spot. Give him his, give him his stupid double points. <laughs> it was double, stupid double point. points, <laughs> and we did, and we did because that was impressive. Dumb was, luck, was. dumb luck, but impressive that he called it. So, he, yeah. Jay Few, you earned those points. Yeah, you earned you earned those double points. Uh, we'll move on now <laughs> <laughs> because the rest of the show took away those points. Yep. 
So, so the next match that lead was, that lead evaporated so quickly. No, 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 not really. Ah, uh, well, well, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see. There was one match that really I was like, oh gosh, this is great. All right. Uh, next match was AJ Styles and Omos versus the Viking Raiders. Uh, and this was where the night really turned bad for one man bands. Yeah. Uh, Mr. I think I think the I I think the 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 comedy's over with uh AJ Styles and Omos. And the Viking Raiders are gonna win it back. Oh, and, yeah, uh, sure enough. One. Sure enough. AJ Styles and Omos got the win. That was a four to one. That was a four to one. Correct. That was a four was. to one. That was, the lone, that was the lone Mohican on that one. Boldness. Yep. And by by the end of that match, everyone else had at least one point on the board. And uh, one man band was still at zero. Yeah, and uh, not fun. Not fun. And now I gotta say, you guys made a lot of bold picks in this one. I'm. I, I know you guys are swinging for you know. You have a champ like me ahead of you guys, and you got to go bold. Okay, okay, Lou, <laughs> take it easy there. <laughs> but no, but that, that was a, that was a bold pick. That was a bold pick, and uh, yeah, sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. But that was a bold pick uh, for you, one man. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All okay. right. I, I I I tried to go bold, but the, the bold bit me. Well, look, I tried. Again. I tried to go bold. In the men's money in the bank match, because I thought that's where they were going to do the swerve, not the women's one. I think because like whenever ones. they do, I had two bold ones. I also had Edge, which no, 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 I no, no, took a chance on. But if I could explain the rationale behind, well, okay, you know what? We'll get to it. You're right. Uh, next match, which I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, was the match that that finally started to to, to really let me see some some positives here. Uh, Bobby Lashley versus Kofi Kingston. Who? Wait, who, who? Wait, what? Who was it? Uh, what, Bobby uh, Lashley. Drew. I mean, sorry. Uh, no, the right, one man right, right. band. Who was one it? One man band. The one man band. Who was it? What? With with who again? The guy who was who was fighting Kofi Kingston. Give right? us give us your best Leo Rush impression. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was Bobby Lashley <laughs> Bobby versus Lashley. Kofi Kingston. Yes, <laughs> yeah, versus Kofi Kingston. <laughs> and I to, what was? I had to prep, had to prep that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, nobody does it better. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so what was essentially a squash match? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what was Kofi that? Kingston oh. got put in the hurt lock, which Bobby Lashley then let go of. He hit him with three dominators. Then put him back into Put it. him back in the hurt lock. He won the match. And I just, I, all I could say at the end of that was, well, number one, thank goodness that uh, J. Few was the only person to pick <laughs> Kofi Kingston because that, that yeah. knocked him off a peg. And then also, whew, at least Kofi Kingston didn't lose in nine seconds. I don't know. What's worse? Nine seconds are getting this beating. Nah, because, you know... What offense did Kofi this, Kingston have? You didn't have any offense in this one. This was a memorable match. This is way more memorable than... Not for Kofi. He was knocked out. He didn't remember anything what happened. <laughs> <laughs> my only question is... My only question is, where the heck was Woods? Right? <laughs> oh, man. I think even Woods was like, I'm not going to be a ringside to see this. Jeez. And I was expecting <laughs> what you were what you were predicting was to happen, but it didn't happen. What did you predict would happen? Uh, would have been how was it? You said no, well, not predicted, but you said it would have been nice to see that if uh, Kofi Kingston had won, and then if Big E on uh, the men's no, side, that was Drew who picked. Uh, that was that was uh, that was one man band who said that that that's what oh, they should have oh, done. Oh, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. which they will do. It looks like at some point. Ooh, because. Uh, I don't see the men's money in the bank when they're cashing in on rings. Hmm. That's true. You're right. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, all right. Let's talk. To, let's talk about the disappointing match of the night. Um, Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. Disappointing. It wasn't disappointing. It was great. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not disappointing for you, Lou. But the wrong person won. Well, well hold, okay? on, hold on. But before we move on, in that other one, that other match, that Bobby Lashley versus Kofi Kingston, again, we had a. Four versus one on that one, right? 
Yeah, yeah, we did. J. Few picked Kofi Kingston, and uh, that that showed pay off. Four versus one, and this one has been bad luck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but so now, now what I like, what I like is, what I like is, if I could say something, the fact that we had matches worth two points really does uh, make people. I feel like this mm-hmm. is proof that it makes people inclined to make bold, bold picks. Yeah, it was tough for me. I couldn't copy anyone. I had to make my own picks. <laughs> ah, there we go. Oh, use your own oh, head. We got him. We got him. We forgot got the him. mic was on. Oh, got damn it. <laughs> I couldn't copy anybody because everybody was making these original picks. <laughs> <laughs> it was too bold for me. <laughs> I ran out of ink to copy. <laughs> so yeah, so oh, so yeah, the matchup with Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley. Ah, uh, all right. So, it was a good match. I don't know. Was this was this match of the night? I think it was. Well, yeah, it might have been. It might have been. It just Edge versus Edge versus Reigns was pretty good, but I think I think yes. I remember they said at one point this was a really great match. Ah. Uh, the fans seemed very into it. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the finish for it, though. I didn't like the finish. I, what I don't like is Rhea Ripley has lost to Charlotte Flair decisively on two occasions in a singles match, and on both occasions, she lost by tapping out. Yeah. She tapped out to the figure eight. Yeah. Well, on that, both times. Me. I know. No, I, I get it. But it's just you couldn't just lose by via natural selection, like some kind of supernatural selection or something. Mm-hmm. It had to be by oh, you know, put her in the figure eight. Yeah, true. In the middle of the ring, she doesn't escape the move, and it's and it's just why are we doing this to Rhea Ripley? And I think it proves Vince doesn't like NXT call ups. Oh, which Raw reinforced completely. Yes, the Raw after Money in the Bank reinforced that oh. completely. But that's neither here nor there. Um, very unfortunate what they're doing to Rhea Ripley. Yeah. So that, and in this one, it was uh, the the prediction battle was. Oh, it was okay. I was uh, wow. It was pretty evenly split. Yeah. I was I was a good company with JFU. <sighs> yeah. Apparently, for the for the, this weekend, having similar picks to JFU was the better way to go. Not similar, but I had better. <sighs> mm-hmm, yeah. All right. <laughs> Like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> no, no, it was it, it was it was three, uh, three versus two on this one, but yeah, uh, Charlotte Flair won three versus two. Yep, but but the minority won on that one. Two, the two beat the three. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, you one. may have had J Few. You had J Few voting alongside you, but uh, we had the randomizer. So well, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Next match. Which was the game changer and really tied up the scoreboard for you and JFU uh, was the men's Money in the Bank match. Uh, JFU went with Seth Rollins of all people. Yeah, which was pretty nuts. Uh, and you went with Big E alongside the one man band. Yeah, randomizer had Riddle, and I went with the bold pick out of left field of. King Nakamura. Yeah. Who Which was a good choice. I thought, I thought he would get the crown and the briefcase. And my reasoning was, whenever, and I, I alluded to this before, whenever there were two Money in the Bank matches on a Money in the Bank paper, think back to when the raw, the brand split meant something. Mm-hmm. There would always be the obvious win and then the swerve win. Mm-hmm. And I thought the obvious win in the women's match would be since the women's match would open, you'd go with the obvious win in the women's match. Mm-hmm. Liv Morgan. You know, what I thought would be the obvious win, but apparently not. And then you would go with the interesting fan favorite swerve in the men's match, which I thought the interesting pick would have been Nakamura. Sure enough, they went the reverse, and the out of left field win came in the first Money in the Bank match, and the, all right, this was the predictable route was in the men's one. Uh, because Big E was the favorite, honestly. Uh, and there were some pretty good spots. Uh, Kevin Owens 
once again somehow did not paralyze himself. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because oh, my gosh, some of those spots. Oh. Uh, he went through a ladder at ringside, landed on what looked like the back of his neck. Again, I gotta, I gotta say one thing. Here. I gotta say one thing because we talked about it earlier uh, before we started recording, which was this King Nakamura winning that you had. I, I, I didn't see it. I, I couldn't go with it. I couldn't copy that pick. I'm sorry, I didn't copy your pick. Yeah, I didn't want you to copy my pick. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, no. What I mean is because at the time I thought it was the right because I thought it was the right pick. I, 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 that storyline would have worked on someone else, but they weren't. They, I don't see them doing any any of that with uh, with Nakamura. Like, like they're, they're not giving him anything I, close I, I to wanna, being a championship. I want to. I want to reiterate. I want to reiterate this because this is a very, very crucial thing to point out. Nakamura is the first Royal Rumble winner in decades to not win a world title. We're talking, you have to go all the way back to the first wow. two Royal Rumble winners wow. for people who've won the Royal Rumble and not held the world title. Mm-hmm. What's he going to do, win another Rumble? No. He's not going to win a title a title shot anytime soon with the way they're booking him. I thought, I money in the bank. It's the way that you j- close the gap between not in the main event scene but deserving to be in it. And I think he's deserving to be in it. Um, Forget the king of strong sounds. I mean, king of the mid card now. Okay, that, that's that's uncalled for, though. <laughs> but that's how they're treating him. Look, he, look, as much as I as much as I I saw the writing and the predictability for Big E, I thought they were going to swerve us because Big E lost to Apollo Cruz for the Intercontinental Title at WrestleMania. Yeah, to to take that yeah. off of him, so you can now pres- go Big after E the, doesn't have a win at WrestleMania. Big E does not have a win at WrestleMania. It was in his hometown. And he was town. facing somebody. He was facing somebody who also didn't have a win at WrestleMania. Yeah, but he had the worst luck because it was in his hometown. That's why he didn't win. Uh, yeah, Money in the Bank should have been held in his hometown. <laughs> Just for your prediction. <laughs> You're too much. I'm just saying. So, yeah, that was your strike right, too, by the way. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Can we just? I, I just want to point the irony out. I'm the one that floated the idea that Money in the Bank matches should be worth two points. And I loved it. I by was this the point. only person. Yeah. Yeah. When you got the two points, everybody was like, "Wow, what a great idea!" <laughs> everybody else, except for the randomizer, except for the randomizer, everybody else got two points in the night at some point, but me. <sighs> <sighs> and which leads to our last match. All right, so by this point, it was tied between Lou and Jay Few. No, uh, no, it wasn't. What are you talking about? Yes, it was. It was four four. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's it. No, no, it was uh, it was four five. It was four four. The end was four five. Oh no, that's oh, correct. Right, it, it was, was four, the, at the end of that match of the of the, of the Money in the Bank. It was four. Lou had a lead. Five, two, two. You had a lead. You had a lead, Lou. And uh, if J. Few would have won in the in the WWE title match, no, the the Universal Championship match. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it would have been a tie. It would have been a tie win. But no, you had to go for the you had to go for the head of the tie, table moment, right? It was it was Roman Reigns me versus uh, J. Few Edge. <laughs> Again, we had another main event back to back. Yeah, while well, everybody else is just looking on to the sidelines. Man, if I'm JFU, I gotta be patting myself on the back. I'm not even talking on the show. I'm not even on the microphone on the show, and I'm getting talked about so much. Kidding? God, lucked out. <laughs> not even yeah. Ivory. Not even Ivory Dice can get that much attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're fake Ivory, by the way. Oh gosh. Yeah, fake Ivory. Oh, oh, wouldn't want to affect anybody's feelings. In case for those elephants listening. <laughs> The demographic, demographic. With their, with their big ears. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> anyway. all right. All right, right. Final match. Roman Reigns versus Edge. Um, and apparently the sins of the cousin do not do not uh, transfer over to the other one. Mm-hmm. Because Reigns retained against Edge with the Us- the Usos were neutralized. That was the that was the shock. The Mysterios neutralized the Usos on the ramp yep. when it looked like Reigns was in trouble. 
And then, sure enough, out of nowhere, Seth Rollins decides to cost Edge of the match. Two times. He tried yeah. to stop it two, two times. Two times. He kicked, he kicked Edge in the, fa- in the back of the head. And then, when Edge was still mounting a comeback, he got on the apron and cost Edge the match. And I don't understand why. And, I don't. I don't understand the reason behind attacking Edge on this one. I thought it was. I thought it was dumb. I thought it was dumb. Uh, Edge being champion would have been a lot easier to challenge, right? Uh, compared to Reign. But <laughs> the way somebody explained it to me was, if Edge won, Reigns would have gone in a title shot before him, probably because he would have had the rematch clause. So he wanted to. He wanted to just neutralize Edge. And go, jump in line to the front of the line, but sure enough, he went to do that. He went to confront Reigns and say, "Yeah, I'm next." This and that, and uh, Edge started beating him up, and they brawled to uh, ringside and up out out of the arena, basically. But Seth into still the, isn't uh, next. Fans. Seth still isn't next. You're right because guess who jumps in front of him now? Da, 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 da. Uh, you had a... Oh my God! Yes. The man that you cannot see because he doesn't recognize Taiwan as a country. <laughs> he was forced to not recognize the CCCP champion. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, John Cena. He showed up and. Basically, just did the "you can't see me" the reins, and then hinted that he was going to challenge for him. Yep. And as you referenced, Lou, he does have a tour planned. So yep, he's going to be there all he's summer. Booked, he's booked until summer. They're calling it the summer of Cena, <laughs> which is an obvious. It's an obvious shot at a, a certain uh, Klaus Klaus Munster Punk. <laughs> Klaus Munster. <laughs> Uh, but overall, I think Money in the Bank was a good uh, a good event. Hell yeah! yeah. Live, crowd, live, live crowd is back, as Drew McIntyre said, who himself was cost the match in the Money the Men's Money in the Bank match. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by Jinder Mahal and his lackeys. Uh, if oh, we yeah. never hear the words Thunderdome again, I think we'll all be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is very true. Which is very true. So. Welcome back, WWE, to the live audiences. Uh, start listening to your fans, though, because oof, because someone uh, on another channel is coming for you on a rampage on Friday night. Yep. yep, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It is gonna be tough. Yep. Right. So yeah, the, there you go. That's our recap of uh, Money in the Bank 2021, where I. I have another point, and I have nine points. Yes. Four points ahead of uh, Rick Hart and two, two over the one-man band. I feel, like doing, I, feel, I feel like doing one of those, will it last forever? We shall find out. Hold on, guys. I got to pull something out of my briefcase. Got my pants. 